Hello and thank you for watching. We're doing a little message this morning on the pride of life. Many years ago I was uh, preaching in juvenile delinquent facilities and we would go out and preach on one day and then come out on another day and just mingle with the crowd and play with the crowd and on their recess where they go outside and do sports. We'd play football with them and baseball and you know just got involved with them. And there was one uh, young man that was very peculiar. I won't say why he was there, but he had this thing with pride. He wanted to play football all by himself. And he would take a football and just all by himself, people watching him and everything, he'd run a little, little ways and stop and take his football and spike it on the ground, just like he had just made a touchdown. And he'd raise his hands up in the air like, woo, and so, do some kind of little dance, you know. And that's all he'd done. Just, it don't take but maybe two minutes to do that process, but he would run, stop, spike the football on the ground real hard, raise his hands up and do number one with his finger and everything. That's kind of like the pride of life. He's trying to exalt himself. Pride does basically two things. It exalts self and it separates you from God. And just for a few minutes here today, I'd like to uh, run some references on this issue of pride of life. We'll start out with 1 John chapter 2 and verse 6, verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. One of the main warnings in that context is the pride of life. Let's look at it in Genesis, in the garden. All right. Genesis in the Garden, chapter 3, verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Good for the foods, deal with the flesh, good for the eyes, pleasant to the eyes, deals with the eyes, and desire to make one wise, deals with the pride of life. It's exalting self. Okay, it separates you from God. Let's look at another issue here. Let's go to Matthew chapter 4. Here's Satan trying to tempt Jesus Christ in the wilderness. And we'll just start out in verse 5. Then the devil taketh him, oh, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 4 and verse 5. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in thy hands they shall bear thee up, lest any time they should dash thy foot against the stone. Um, in the context here, angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up. In other words, lifting up. That's your pride of life. You see it today. I mean, people, you know, watch uh, some of these movies, and like for example, uh, watch a fighter pilot, and they watch the movie, and them they're envisioning themselves playing the role as a fighter pilot in a plane. and You know, kids do that all the time. Or they watch a, uh, a war movie or something like, and they envision themselves in the movie being the hero of the movie. Or maybe a, a Western or something like that, the same thing. Uh, all kind of different roles can be played in the, in the pride of life. They might picture themselves uh, uh, as they watch a, a race on television or, or whatever. Uh, picture themselves winning some great race, you know, in victory lane, uh, or picture themselves as some great politician they just won, or they've been watching uh, some kind of kung fu movie or whatever, and they envision and picture themselves as, as the kung fu victor that just won the battle, you know. Or there's other areas of pride of life. Like sometimes you see people that uh, they want to be like the Joneses down the street. I mean, here's a Here's a couple just starting out. They're wanting to buy a new car, a new house, new everything, and they're going in debt to do it. They don't have the money to do it. They're not a good steward of the money they have, and they're going in deep debt. They become house poor, and uh, they get so far in debt they can't come out. It forces them into bankruptcy and you know things like that. Uh, or some guy that hasn't even gone to college and uh, or, any, or pursued any career training, and he wants a brand new car, you know, and uh, he's putting himself in, in great debt. And uh, it's the pride of life. It's trying to exalt self as somebody, like somebody else that could afford something like that. And 
many, many, many years ago, you couldn't go in that kind of debt. As a matter of fact, if you went to debt and you couldn't pay your debts, you had what they call debt or prison, where you actually had to go to prison because of your debts. But today they have bankruptcy where you can just, you know, get with a lawyer and declare bankruptcy and, and, and uh, to a certain extent your assets are protected and you have to give up some things. But uh, Anyway, that's a short little message devotion on the pride of life. It exalts self and it separates you from God. It's not where you want to be. Thank you very much for watching.